Well, it's party time, Mom. Welcome to another episode of the Chad Prather Show here at the Mothership, which is Studio 22. At the helm, we got the puppet master, Mark Tate, who is driving us into the nether regions deep into the pandemic, which is a COVID-19. The China virus is what I'm calling about. The Wuhan flu, the Wu flu for short, the uh, Kung flu, whatever you want to call it, the Chop Suey. I love it. The Hop Song Sing, the Something Wong. Uh, Candice, the queen of the Ethiopians, is also sitting over there. My brain, my filter, sometimes she needs to put a thicker filter on because I just don't have one. Of course, at the pub, we got hot news, Natalie. We got party foul Steve and my, my favy, <laughs> Sarah Gonzalez, the host of the News and Why It Matters, sitting in the hot seat today. We're going to get into all things pandemic. It's the end of the world, and we know it. I feel fine. Uh, the world's at war. I don't know if you guys have figured it out, but uh, let me tell you something. Trump said the world's at war with a hidden enemy. And, and when he said that, a lot of people kind of took a deep breath and thought, are we really? Our own president, just last evening, as, we were, as he was streaming into our homes, was telling us that we are at war. Guess what's going to happen this evening? The United States and Canada are coming up with a mutual agreement on closing the border, which I always said we can't trust those white people up north. We've been focusing on the southern border. You can't trust the ones up north. The Jim Carreys of the world that come down here and, and make a billion dollars and then complain and want socialism. Now, we need a slingshot to send them back. We're going to shut down the border. So whole cities are under lockdown. Testing facilities are overrun with requests for COVID-19 screenings, which, by the way, is not an easy screening. They're not just going to swab your throat. They got to go up your nose and dig around in your brain a little bit. <sighs> this is the first time, arguably, since World War II that the entire world has suffered together, mourned together, lost together. Regardless of the outcome of the next few months, the world on the other side of this pandemic is going to be different. Now, as a nation, as a world, we will value things, we will see things in a different way. I hope after this passes that you'll never take for granted picking up your kids after school, never take for granted being able to, quote, run to the grocery store, never take for granted being able to go to the movie theater or meeting friends for dinner. Now, the next few weeks and months will no doubt put everything in our lives into perspective. At least that's my hope. Now, what truly matters, the, the value of family and friendship, those are the things you need to be focused on right now. You look at a nation like Italy, it's entering roughly their 24th day of self-isolation and their 11th day in total lockdown. This is a true once-in-a-lifetime phenomenon for all of us. Now, after this, we as a nation and a global society will be bonded forever. We will reflect back on these times to future generations with remorse and wisdom, and don't underestimate the power of America. We're going to come back from this. It could take months. It could take years. Things will get worse before they get better. That's always a reality. Now, it will not be easy. But as the author Victor Hugo said, even the darkest night will end and the sun will rise. How are you facing this circumstance and this situation? We're going to get into it and we're going to talk about the silver lining through all of it on this episode of the Chad Prather Show. I'm glad you're here. Don't go anywhere. Hey, when you use the bathroom, you always close the door behind you, right? Well, you know. Hey, you don't want random passers-by looking in on you, so why would you let people look in on you when you go online? Using the internet without ExpressVPN is like going to the bathroom and not closing the door, you nasty people. Did you know that your internet service provider like Comcast or Verizon, they know every single website you visit? Come on, fellas. And what's worse is they can sell this information to ad companies and tech giants who will use your data to target Target you. ExpressVPN puts a stop to this. It creates a secure encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet so that your online activity can't be seen by anyone. I use ExpressVPN on all my devices. It works on everything, phones, laptops, even routers. So everyone who shares your Wi-Fi can still be protected even if they don't have ExpressVPN. The best part is using ExpressVPN is as easy as closing the bathroom door, you barbarians. You just fire up the app, click on the button, and you are protected. ExpressVPN is the world's number one rated VPN by TechRadar, Wired, and The Verge, and countless others. So if you're like me and believe your online activity is your business, secure yourself by visiting expressvpn.com slash watchchad today. Use my exclusive link. 
expressvpn.com slash watch chat. And you can get extra an extra three months free. That's expressvpn.com slash watch chat. Hey, folks, um, let's talk about this thing. We've talked about it the last two nights. Uh, this week, we have talked about it from a message of hope on Monday night with Pastor Jenison Franklin. Uh, we have talked about it from the perspective of where it came from and is it a racist virus because we call it the China flu. I love that the president continues to double down and continues to call it the China flu. I said to you yesterday, and I still maintain, he's trying to communicate a message that he can't just outright come out and say, and that is it originated in China. It was created by them, whatever means, whether it was the Harvard doctor that went over there and took all that stuff, blah, blah, blah. It was still created on purpose by the Chinese in order to affect control on the Hong Kong protesters and whatever else is going on in that shitty ass country. And they didn't get it under control, bottom line. And for those of you out there defending China, I don't trust you. You people have a problem. You, these folks out there, and I said it back when the NBA was all up in arms about the, the, the thing on China, banning China products and all that stuff, and we were going to boycott them as a nation, and the NBA kept coming out, because you're a bunch of sellouts. You're willing to go into, into, and defend communist dictators that destroy their, their civilizations and their people, and these genocidal murderers that, ugh, ugh, you make me sick is what you make me sick. So today we're going to talk about the things that make me sick. All right. Sarah Gonzalez, you <laughs> yes. don't make me sick. Okay, I was waiting. You don't make me sick. But I, I got waiting. some things I really want to get off my chest today. It sounds like it. Because I'm twitter fied. And you know how I get mm. when I get twitter fied. Here we like, go. Like, I'm like, okay, I can't say everything I want to say in 288 characters. I don't even know how many they give you anymore. But it's pissing me off. Hot News Natalie, you're pissed off. I'm pretty, I'm pretty yes. frustrated. You live in South Lake, Texas. Your mayor sent out an edict from on high mm -hmm. that talked about the things that they are going to necessitate and they're going to create in your community. Now, yeah. I, I don't know if this is a copy and paste job from <laughs> other places that got sent out, yeah. but this was some crappy wording. Have you got it pulled up? Yeah. I, I, I want you to pull this I thing up and I want you to read. They, they sent out a list of whereas's. It was Whereas. A, it was a bunch of legalese. And I first of all, let me say, I love my city. Like yeah. when we had an issue at our house, um, our mayor was one of the first ones that morning at our house to help us in, in that disaster because a car hit our house. Wow. Um, yeah. And she was there. Um, I, it, this is very confusing times right now. I'm frustrated. Everybody's living in a, in fear. We know fear is from Satan. <laughs> and it, it's some devil. for some reason, we're all hunkered down. But today she released something that said there was a declaration of disaster in South Lake, which allows them to implement some of these, you know, uh, restaurants, bars, retail, right? 50%. And let me interrupt you for a second. Mm -hmm. A social disaster, a disaster in South Lake, which, by the way, let me explain <laughs> to you, is the third wealthiest community in the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex behind Highland Park and University Park. And you guys are in disaster. Well, and she just want you know, I think they're wanting to keep, you know, crowds at a minimum. No mm -hmm. crowds, actually. Mm -hmm. But I, I, all of that is kind of par for the course, what we've been seeing in every city. Dallas did it. Fort Worth. I mean, we're, we're seeing that. However, they're in, in, in this legalese of the court document that we saw. Um, there was a number five that said that it that this declaration authorizes the city to commandeer or use any private property temporarily acquire by lease or other means sites required for temporary housing units for emergency shelters for evacuees subject to comp compensation requirements pursuant to section 418.020 of the Texas government code so is this legalese that go has been embedded in all of these documents either way I'm not okay with that. Yeah. I, regardless of what, oh, it, it's just, it's in all of them. We're not really going to do that. Yeah. Now, ah. in layman's terms, 
they're saying they can come in, commandeer your home if they need to quarantine Correct. people, if they need to set up triage, if they need to use it as a as a pseudo hospital or pharmacy or anything like that. They can come in and basically do whatever they want to mm-hmm. with your private property. To your private property. Yeah. Now, uh, communication back and forth that you showed me between people close to you and other people close to you. Uh, and some up. of the responses, they were saying, well, this, you have to understand what we mean is, oh, no, hell no, Mm-mm. don't give me Mm-mm. this whole what you mean is. Actually, Chad, yes, people are seeing that, but my husband posted on uh, the on the, this morning, because they made it public on both the mayor's page, the city's page, with her speaking, um, he asked that question. I, I'm very confused as to why you felt the need to put this in there. That is the only one that has not been responded to at this point. Mm-hmm. Every huh. other one has been responded to. That is the, at this point. Now he just did it a couple hours ago. Um, she might be just as frustrated. To be, I mean, to be honest, again, th- this still I, has I even, to be clarified. It does. That has still to be has clarified. to be clarified. And, and whether I'm, you're frustrated with it not yeah. or not, you put it out there. Yep. You still put it out there. And I am of the, you know, uh, you know, there's family first. You know, your city. You take care of your city within itself. I, I believe in all of that. Um, so until we get an answer from the mayor, it's just it, that that is for people who you know have our own property that's that's scary verbiage that's the kind of stuff that gets a lot of people fired up and why is it ne- necessary to be in there you had an opinion about that earlier I don't when we were know. in the ma- i don't remember what my what was my <laughs> oh I steve said, does never steve never has an opinion with conviction well he said that you you said that you know that, that no, i think they can do that if if that's just the way it's written probably everywhere it's written somewhere that they can the government can come and take well with the house. exception of the united states constitution <laughs> yeah i know that basically they, they, says the you city, can't do the that the cities have these things like okay let's say next door to your house there was uh, a drug house or something or kidnapping stuff they could come in and commandeer your house and use it as a headquarters if they found sex trafficking next door that they could come into my house and use it to take down the bad guy yeah. i'd be like hell no go over to the johnson's house <laughs> <laughs> well, and I feel like I've paid for enough. I don't want you coming here seeing my hydroponics <laughs> growing underneath the bathroom sink. Our cities, I mean, our, our, our sorry, our taxpayers have paid for enough in that city where you can open up the, you know, all, a bunch of public. Mm-hmm. I mean, they could yeah. take over. I, couldn't the government go in and take over Texas Gun Experience and make it a. a hospital? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> okay, theoretically, with let me the, just put it this with way. With the wording, uh, I mean, at this point, the government uh, that, and that's something I'm going to get into. We're going to get into the next segment. It's really pissing me off about all of us and the way we're behaving and letting rights be abused. We have the boot on our neck, right? If they showed up, Sarah, at your house and they got a, a, a military truck out there with a bunch of sick people on there. You've seen the movies. E.T. <laughs> you know, they got them out there and they're just going to come in there like, hey, we need your house. We need you Mm-mm. out of the way. We no. need your house. What are you going to do? Right. I mean, here's a couple of guys with M16 standing out there. What are you going to do? You'd like to think that you would protest, but in the moment, yeah, I mean, how what are you going to do? How can you? I, what you can can't. you do no. in that situation? Yeah. Uh, I've seen, like, recently, a couple of months ago, there was that guy that they red flagged, and they were coming after this guy because he had put some weird stuff online or whatever. And remember, he suited up in his fatigues, and he basically had a standoff in the attic of his house with them down the street and we were all watching this his little live feed videos going this dude's freaking nuts <laughs> right yeah so what do you do what do you do in this situation and that's that's a hard it's a hard call because we have gotten to a point where we trust the government unfortunately so bad there's no conservatives in this country i, I just put it out there i got people are pissed at me on twitter right now and we'll talk about it in the next segment but there's no conservatives left in this country we talk a good game it's it's really mm-hmm. disgusting. Mm-hmm. It's disgusting because if they're going to do it in South Lake, they're going to do it anywhere. Mm-hmm. You know, New Orleans, the mayor of New Orleans just came out yesterday and said, you can't go buy a new firearm. No more new firearms can be purchased. Now, I didn't know they had an exclusion clause in the Second Amendment <laughs> for pandemics. I didn't know the founding fathers had that much foresight. Oh, my God, a pandemic's <laughs> happening. You can't buy a new gun. That's I mean, can you imagine Thomas Jefferson saying that? It's a, it's a the two A, so it's two A with the B in parentheses. Yeah, so it's two the little A clause. point B. <laughs> if I was gonna if I was gonna go in and commandeer a house, it would be in South Lake, not Johnson County. No, I agree. <laughs> you know, I agree. I'd much <laughs> rather take over the uh, Stanier House than the Powell House. Yeah, exactly. Or the Prather House. That's that's definitely true. I told I texted her this morning on the commute. I said, um, 
I, I want to get rich so I can live in, she calls it Slake for short, not <laughs> South Lake. Oh, Slake. that's what that meant. I didn't know what that meant. I was like, where's Slake? That's how all the popular people in the town do it, of so I just copied them. I'm not popular. Is I said, it, they really I say get, Slake? I want to get rich so I can live in Slake and the government can <laughs> come in near my house. No, they're not doing that in Johnson County. Mm. No, trailer house capital of the world. <laughs> Only the elitists get their houses commandeered by the government. <laughs> our governor, so. Ken Shetter, he ain't he ain't wanting to commandeer anything. I mean, our, our mayor, Ken Shetter, down in Burleson, he ain't wanting to commandeer anything. <laughs> None of them. He wants to just give it away. Yeah. <laughs> I live next door to our tax assessor. Uh, his wife texted the other day and was like, um, not tax assessor. I, I can't remember Paul's title, but anyway, he, he takes care of the money down there treasure treasury no, no it's a tax deal but oh. anyway it's like property tax thing okay so he's the enemy i'm just kidding good dude <laughs> but his wife was checking on us the other day and we're like no you stay over there and you're rich home you're rich home <laughs> we can't even get grass to grow in our front yard natalie y'all probably have a sprinkler system and mm. and, and pest control y'all have pest control mm -hmm. y'all have all that do have flushing yard? toilets <laughs> We, I, I worked, I changed, I cleaned out our pool pump yesterday and Joseph and I cleaned pool our Pool pump. <laughs> wow. We got a pool. Must be nice. Wait, we're moving on Must up. Be Wait nice. to the east side. <laughs> to a deluxe apartment in When was your house side. built? <laughs> My house was built in 1984. <laughs> Six. We we'll probably get copyrighted on that again. I don't <laughs> yeah. sound like, beef don't burn in the kick a copyright so song. <laughs> just to get up that hill. Uh, now we're... Weezy! <laughs> I walk down the street and Slate going, Weezy! <laughs> I can hear him saying, Cracker! 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 Florence! Florence! <laughs> where Weezy? Weezy! <laughs> oh, boy. Here we go. <laughs> oh, oh don't God, fall. He's going to fall. I know. You weren't ready for that, Mark. <laughs> I wasn't ready for it either. Mark's ready for every mark on his toes. Most exercise you've had all month. <laughs> I'm just right? winded now. Well, I had to bend over the other day to pick up a broken vodka bottle in the driveway. <laughs> 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 I went and stocked up, man, and tsh, it broke everywhere. Oh, no. So I'm sober. <laughs> and you're coughing. Yeah, I know. That's good. <laughs> Nat Natalie coughed right in my mouth a while ago. COVID. I think that's a little dramatic. It was not right in his mouth. Right in my mouth. No. So we have one of our sponsors on the podcast, um, the uh, preparewithchad.com. Yep. People can still go over there and get some stuff, but they're like they're like six weeks behind on yeah, delivery. Probably. Normally that's a two-day delivery. Yeah. Yep. I, I asked for some. Yeah. Because they're a sponsor for my show too, and they were like, "Yeah, we can't get it to you right now because no. we've got a, a whole bunch of other people." Now, a few a couple of weeks ago, I did go ahead and order some. Yeah. Right. Uh, and I and I'm stocked up. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah, I I'm have good. some too, but I'm good. And and you know, people are like, "Okay, man, don't be talking about the stuff you got." Look, <sighs> people want to laugh at me for years. They want to laugh at Glenn Beck. They want to laugh at all of us. They they were always, "Oh, you bunch of guys prepping and all that stuff." Now they're like. Wow, you have all no f you, <laughs> f you. You ain't coming to nah. their house. You know, with a big old no, smile, I'll South give Lake. you an f you. <laughs> That's right, because we had the foresight mm -hmm. and the forethought to take care of some things. And Glenn ain't wrong. I mean, I, you remember Glenn Beck? He used <laughs> to come in. He, he used did. to come around the studio. He did. Yesterday, I saw him on a monitor on my yeah, show. Yeah, he's at home, barefooted. <laughs> he won't even let his producers come by the house. No. He's I, turning his own stuff on. That's how bad it's gotten. Glenn's pushing his own damn button. It's true. I told him too. I said I was. I keep waiting for the invite to come to your bunker. Yeah. And he said, "Don't wait for it. You're Party not getting it." Party offered to drive him up. <laughs> yeah, I was going to drive him up to his bunker. Don't say it. Don't say where. I'm not. Glenn but. will come. Glenn will send the the SWAT. They'll be descending <laughs> down from the rafters in the studio. You think people ain't listening? Whoo! I got shot down by some Scottish dude out there. Said I couldn't. Yeah, do don't it. say his name. Either. Well, Why isn't not? it isn't it funny? They say all of the not the people who are non essential to the to the actual studio. Yeah. go home. I'm like, hold on, isn't this flipped? All the essential people you got at home protected. We're apparently the non essential people <laughs> no, who are expendable. They won't even let me get a plan to work from home. <laughs> they won't even let me get a plan to work from what, home. What do, you, what do you mean essential? I apparently I'm am not essential. I'm calling out the executives at Blaze TV. <laughs> well, since we're not doing live shows anymore, I'm essentially non-essential at home anymore <laughs> yeah it's like well, i'm that's, just a, <laughs> I'm just gonna like, be thrown just, out I'm just you're there. squatting <laughs> you're basically living illegal in your own home yes 
Uh -oh. <laughs> That's funny. Hey, y'all hang tight. I'm going to tell you what else is pissing me off. I'll be right back. <laughs> I sneezed in public yesterday, and the world went mad. I mean, just absolutely lost their mind. Five people threw masks at me. Two of them took them off their own face and just chunked them. Boom. I was getting hit like a rubber band. I mean. It, Side of the face with an N95. It's just March in Texas <clears throat> when we all have allergies right now. Yeah. Not that we don't consider that at all. Exactly. And that's, uh, 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 uh. You know, and I posted a picture of myself on, on the gram yesterday on Instagram. Follow me at Watch Chat. Uh, I posted a picture yesterday, and I had the mask on. Because, again, I sneezed in public, and somebody handed me a mask. <laughs> That's why you had the mask. Yeah. So okay. I put it on, took a picture. I mean, you know, I don't waste anything. I put right. it on the gram. Of course. And so everybody was losing their shit on that one, talking about, oh, my God, the mask ain't going to do anything for you. Why are you wearing a mask? I mean, you know that's stupid, right? And I'm like, oh, my Lord. You know, Chad, I'm a big follower of yours, but you need it. No, you're not. You're not a big follower if you don't know how I am. Mm -mm. Right. And when mm -mm. I say things, you know, I, I love thought it when you people... were just. I thought you were just showing off because you had a mask and I don't. Only Man, the elitists have masks And then people get now. mad at you like, you need to save those for the medical professionals. Okay. You know, there was a story that just came out. I think it was yesterday. And they said that, you know how they said the masks don't do anything? Now they came back and said, yeah, we were just saying that because we wanted to save them for the medical professionals. They, them, yeah. they actually well, do work. They're going through six months supply of medical equipment in three days. Okay, so Trump came out um, this morning. And let me see if I can get back over to that. So Trump came out this morning and he is, uh, uh, let me get back to it. Uh, he announced that he's invoking the Defense Production Act, uh, which is part of the administration's efforts to tackle the pandemic. Um, he described himself as being a, quote, wartime president. Bum, bum, bum. Mm. Uh, he said it can do a lot of good things if we need it. We'll, we have, we'll have it all completed, uh, signing it in just a little while. So what that does, it ensures the private sector that they can... It's like if we went to war, yeah. and the private sector needs to start building instruments of war uh, and things for our defense and what have you. Uh he says it can ramp up manufacturing of distribution of emergency medical supplies and equipment. So uh, it gives the White House the authority to increase the production of masks and ventilators and respirators, as well as expand hospital capacity to combat the coronavirus. Another thing they're going to allow is medical professionals to cross state lines, which heretofore has been illegal. You can't, mm -hmm. can't do that. So they're going to enable people to cross state lines in an effort to supply that. So we're living in weird times. Mm -hmm. These are weird times. And I don't think people really appreciate that it is, as I said in the opening statement, it is going to get worse before it gets better. Uh, it's not that I'm worried about getting a single cell virus. It's that people, 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 people. And let me say something. If you have the flu or one of your kids has the flu, because people still get the flu, more so than, than this thing. Mm -hmm. If your kid gets the flu and they haven't been to Iran or China, or out of the country, and they haven't been around a person who has tested positive, then guess what? They got the flu! <laughs> put, them in a, put them in a room. Stay home. Give them soup. Give them liquids. And let them rest. Mm -hmm. Stay home. Don't take them out around old people. There's nothing that says that you need to rush to the hospital and get them right. tested. To you know, what? No? And they're not going to the, give it to you. The pro and the protocol is still going to be the same. They're not going to give it Go home and get fluids and plenty of rest. It's a virus. I'm telling you, your, your PAs, your NPs, your, your DOs, your MDs are all going to tell you the same thing. Yep. Have you been out of the country? Yep. Um, your kid's going to be like, yeah, we were just in Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that right? <laughs> Which might as well be another country. <laughs> um, but, you know, kids are so dang honest about everything. <laughs> um, Instead of a mask, put duct tape on them. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just protecting them from the yeah, COVID good. nineteen. But they're going to ask the same thing. Have you been? Have you been around anybody that tests positive? Um, uh, that's the deal. I mean, they're going to and then they're going to send you home because they're not going to do that. Of course, they are testing vaccines, which is the fastest that I know of, probably in history. Yes. Of of kind of eerily so. Yeah, I mean, there's no telling what they're squirting. Yeah, in you. 
That's a, but, <laughs> a little troublesome but to hey, me. You know, the lady that was the first test person to go in and take that, I mean, she's a hero. God bless yes, her. Yes. You couldn't pay me enough money to no, be that person. I mean, person. God bless her for trying it. Uh, yeah. The, uh, I'd be like, hey, look, I want to volunteer Steve. <laughs> Steve is tribute. Yeah. Party foul is tribute. I still don't understand. They already have it for cattle. They have that vaccination. If you could put it, if you could stick it in a cow or dog, you could stick it in a human. I don't know that I would trust that. Really? You don't? And no. is this vaccine going to be like MMR where you get it once or twice? Or is this going to be like the flu vaccine where you get it every, every year, year now? Well, these That's are things we don't know. Right. It might be a mind control Chad, drug. you know you everything. Every no, we don't know. We don't know how this thing's going to play know. out. Well, even the flu vaccine, they don't. that's just a guess. It's a guess. Well, okay, our friend Candace Owen, she put it on Twitter last night. She said, you guys got to stop comparing this thing yep. and say, just because you get a vaccine, you're not going to get this. She said, I, you know, last year I got a flu vaccine and a month later got the flu. Mm-hmm. Yep. Just because you get a vaccine is no guarantee. Mm-hmm. Right. And I got people out there all the time. It's so funny how everybody, these anti-vaxxers, and I'm not getting into that because you people are freaky nuts, man. Look, because you, and again, it's like you essential oil people. I don't care. Like, I'm just going to make fun of it because that's what I do. I make fun of everything. I don't care if you're breathing oils or swallowing oils or whatever, rubbing it on your. They do work. Okay. That's good. I'm sure they do work. If it works inside your head, good for you. <laughs> hey, man, I'm taking the new psychosomatic oil. It is fantastic. <laughs> uh, but that's the thing. And we are going to get into what's pissing me off here in a second, but this is sort of pissing me off. It's too. a new, it's a new pissed off. But thing. these anti-vaxxers and the people, you know, I posted a video of getting the flu shot a couple of months ago. People were like, "Oh my oh, god, my how god. dare you do that? You're putting mercury and iridium and plutonium and you know, <laughs> vantium and all this chemicals in your body. You're going to be glowing red here in a little while. You're going to explode. <laughs> you know, you're going to turn into that dude that whatever was on Iron Man. I want." <laughs> I mean, I'm like, but now everybody wants to talk about, we need a vaccine for COVID-19. Where are we going to get our COVID <laughs> vaccines? Oh, you people are a bunch of hypocrites. It's just like a bunch of people out there that say, well, Donald Trump ain't my president, but he's going to send you a $1,000 check. You're going to cash that some buck. <laughs> cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. I don't want the check. They ch- oh, keep the checks. <laughs> That's the dumbest thing they could do is hand out checks. Okay, we're going to get into that too. All right, let's oh, get into talk it. about it. Because oh, here's boy. what I said on Twitter. And I'm just going to, what I'm going to be able to do is I'm just going to be able to exacerbate your appetite for more and more words that I'm going to share with you. <laughs> but I said last night at midnight, straight up midnight, here's what I said, Candice. Okay, it was 12.07. <laughs> I said, I'm ashamed. I've often warned about those that claim to be conservatives but live dependent on the government tit. As soon as panic sets in, you run directly to it. Quite literally, you suck. Mm. A freaking man. Better to be dead than a slave. Ooh. Which, of course, is a 15th century quote. Better to be dead than a slave. You know, Patrick Henry said, give me liberty or give me death. Now, I am not talking about the person, the mother, the single mother, who has four kids, who's struggling to keep her head above water and keep people fed and clothed and sheltered. I'm not talking about that person mm-hmm. who needs assistance. That's what that's for. I'm talking about you able-bodied bastards who are out there sucking the life out of the system and usurping all of the resources. Amen. Preach it, brother. (laughs) Of people who need it. So I had a lot of people come to me, private messages, all the stuff, and said, I am so disappointed in you saying that. And then they went into the sob story of all the things wrong with their life. And I said, well, obviously, I'm not talking about you or your sister or your cousin. Exactly. I'm talking about the person that claims to live conservative, but you know damn well they don't. Mm -hmm. They're living in government subsidized housing. They're 40 year old healthy men who are just too lazy to get out there and go get a real job. You know, they're going to do multi level marketing. No offense (laughs) to those of you who do it, but that ain't a job. That's a side hustle. You're going to go out and sell essential oils. I'm going to piss everybody off. (laughs) I don't care. But you know, I'm telling you, Dag, I'm truth. Multi-level marketing, Amway ain't a career choice. <laughs> it's not, Mark. <laughs> Tell that to the million-dollar That's fine. Amway uh, that, president. The, the double diamonds and the platinums <laughs> and the emeralds and the rubies and the gold. And Tell that you to can the... sell all the damn soap you want, but I'm telling you, 
You go out and try to sell Amway today, and you're going to be broke, Joe. <laughs> you're going to be broke. That ain't a career choice, man. And so what do you do? You're like, oh, man, I'm on hard times. No, you created the hard times. You created them. And now, and now Trump comes out and says, okay, we're going to spend $500 billion on everybody. And how do you dole that out? I don't know. You know, people, people, he said people that make a million dollars a year, they don't need help. True. Um, uh, keep my thousand dollars, Don. I've been broke, man. <laughs> mm-hmm. I've done, I've told you all before, you know, people always say, oh, your wife's such a lucky woman. Well, back when I had $7.58 in the <laughs> bank account and had to get to Monday, she didn't feel so damn lucky. Mm-hmm. I've been there. Yeah. I have been there. I know what it's like to be broke. But- I know what it's like not to know where money's coming from. Even when you were there, you still bought me beer. That's true. <laughs> mm, so that's, that's true. I've seen it because you needed it. Yeah, <laughs> like a COVID person on a ventilator, you needed that beer. Yeah, but but that's my thing, man. I'm not talking about the person out there that needs it. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. have a welfare system for a pur- purpose, and I know there are those of you out there saying, "Man, I could use extra thousand dollars if the government give it to me." But what you gonna do when that thousand dollars is gone? And it's gonna be gone. Now, I don't see anybody in America this this malnourished. Really, we all eat. That the, new the, TV I want's nine eighty eight, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking, do I have enough to cover the taxes and everything? Stay under a thousand. Well, okay. no, I mean you're right. The, even the the poor people in our country, a lot of them are obese. It's an epidemic. And have, yeah, and have not, a seven hundred dollars cell phone. They're certainly eating so, right. So these are the things I'm talking about. And if you can't understand the spirit of what I'm trying to communicate, because I don't want anybody suffering. Right. Mm-mm. I have a compassionate heart. I have a generous heart. I yes, really do. you do. But, but I'm telling you, I don't want anybody suffering. But to be a conservative, and I want to get deeper in this, because there's principles to being a conservative. And I said earlier, we don't have any left in this country. And I'm going to explain to you what I mean in just a minute when we come back. Hey, uh, before I make all of you mad, I want to announce that uh, Dr. Pepper has now had his license revoked. He's just Mr. Pepper. He's Mr. Pepper now. So don't go to Dr. Pepper for your COVID-19. I'll tell you what you do go to is watchchad.com, get the brand new CD. And today on YouTube, as well as on Facebook, we released the official He's Still Your President uh, music video. It's out there. Go get it and share it. Uh, Myself and Ryan Weaver and, of course, Party Foul Steve and Sarah Hobbs and um, Bougie Sean. And what's that guy's name? Oh, yeah, Texas legend Steve Helms. All involved with that. Great project. Bart Rose, Fort Worth Sound. is recorded there. Uh, our buddy Scott Bergen, uh, Little League baseball coach extraordinaire, <coughs> sent me a little video right here. Here's, here's what the world is coming to, folks. I want you to see this. Check it out. And here comes Coach. Coming out to meet with the umpires before the game. They're social <laughs> distancing, flipping the coin. Look at that. Now, Scott told me that it's hard to get a three finger dip out of the can while you're wearing those gloves. There's a whole coaching <laughs> staff right there. Oh, my gosh. That's got to be a joke. That's got to be right? a joke, right? <laughs> well, that's Scott and his crew. Okay. Everything Scott does. So is then, a joke. yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, follow Scott Bergen on YouTube. That's funny stuff. And then if you really if you really want to know what we could be in the middle of, thank God that we have leadership in Washington, <laughs> D.C. right now. Uh, <laughs> I'm telling you, we could be in bad, bad shape. And I want you guys to take a look of what's potentially coming if we don't stand together and get Trump reelected in November of 2020. Take a look at uh, your Democratic frontrunner <laughs> right here after his uh, live speech online the other day. Thank you all. Thank you all for listening. <laughs> He's lost. Here comes Jill. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Did he dodge her? Like. Okay. <laughs> I mean, there's no audience there. What's he doing? Standing it's... around waiting on a standing ovation? What the hell? It's so awkward. I mean, he's just standing there. She goes up to kiss him. He oh. turns the cheek. He's like, oh, my sister's here. <laughs> you know? And it's his wife. And, he seems uh, so surprised to see her. 
Did he even know who she was? And then he turns his head like, you know, she's trying to kiss him on the mouth. (laughs) And he's like, he looks like a dead gum. I mean, the Alzheimer's is strong with this. He can't afford to get COVID. (laughs) Oh, my God. Oh, no. That would take him out. What's that other video we got tuned? (laughs) What is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is this was uh, just kind of a, sign, a show of patriotism on the part of the Italians and uh, Italy, man. I'm telling you, they are locked down. It's a bad, bad situation. Won't get into all the whys and the whats and everything, but uh, take a look at this. This is pretty inspiring for them. Ciao, Bella. It's pretty. Yeah. Pretty amazing what they did there, flying in that formation and putting out the colors, the tricolors of the uh, Italian flag, green, white, and red. And no, that's that, a- how they just kind of created that ribbon all the way across mm-hmm. the sky. You know? And no, that's not chemtrails. Valentina y'all, Faragon. Chemtrails. Y'all think that's for the Italian people, but that's actually a welcoming committee for <laughs> those things coming from... For the from, aliens? Yes. Oh. Yeah. So I, I spent a little time on Reddit last night. Oh, boy. Here we go. You know what I do. You know how I no, do. Boy. Same reason you do, Candace. You went down the rabbit hole. I, I spent a little time on Reddit because last night Oprah was trending. The okay. number one trending on Twitter last night was Oprah and sex trafficking. Why? Well, because they were claiming that she had been arrested for sex trafficking. Really? It was trending. Yeah. Number one trending on Twitter last night was Oprah. Uh, so I jumped in and started looking at it. Of course, Oprah finally responded and said, I just got a phone call saying that I'm trending. I look and I see what for. She goes, this is, you know, blah, 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 not true. And so <laughs> you go under the comments and it's funny. They got people going, you lying, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Let them kids go over. Oh Oprah got goodness. them kids in the basement. <laughs> Quit eating pizza, Oprah. Pizza gate. You know, of course, then you go into the Tom Hanks thing and the, you know, yeah. they're saying that Tom Hanks has been arrested and he's being held in an Australian hotel room for pedo stuff. And, and everybody's out there. And, and this will piss off, piss off the QAnon crowd and the, the chans and the whatever. Pissing I don't off care. everyone today. Huh? You're pissing off everyone, everyone today. It's care. fine. I think I could write for Reddit. You probably could. But I was reading some stuff about how I saw a picture and they were all these uh, celebrities and world leaders and and religious leaders were sitting around a table in a conference room and there was a head of state. They were all reaching for their syringes full of adrenochrome and they were about to take their injections, but his hand was not the normal pink flesh. It was webbed and it was green and it was a claw and it was reptilian. And so you have all these reptilian people out there. Lizard people. That believe that the lizard people are really running things and oh god that's that's what you get for listening to the after dark yeah you know in the middle of the night on the radio and i know there'll be those who come on here and go oh you don't know you don't know yeah i I reasonably do i reasonably (laughs) do know you know i mean and, and it's like they're taking every tom hanks picture he puts on instagram and making it into some coded message you know, oh, you don't know about the murder of Isaac Hackey. Okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, you know, it's just Cappy. That's his name, Isaac Cappy. I, I, it's just crazy. You get it? It's, it is a rabbit hole. It is. So I had a few friends of mine last night who were posting about it, and I, was, I sent them messages. I was like, do you really believe this? Because, like, I want, and they were like, well, I can't find anything online about it. I'm like, then shut up! <laughs> I think it's just entertaining. Yeah. It's total whatever. entertainment. That's but I mean, a, we're I read in the middle and, of some serious crap right here. Do I believe that Hollywood's full, full of pedophiles? Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. Of course. Absolutely. Are there people that need to be rounded up? Is there some stuff behind the Epstein deal? Yes. Absolutely. Weinstein? Of course. Are there people mm-hmm. out there that can name names? You better believe it. Or is there a list of people as long as your freaking arm that, that need to go to jail for... Uh, yeah. Absolutely. I believe a lot of things are going out there. But, uh, you know, going on out there. But it's just crazy. Just crazy. The stuff that's going on and I, we're locked up with our children we are in our homes i saw a meme that said my kid's been learning common core but i'm about to teach him how to carry the one yeah exactly <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's exactly i'm like none of that and makes AK, sense. she yeah. had a meme on her insta this morning that said uh what day one of homeschooling and i'm trying to figure out how to get this kid cla- uh, transferred out of my class <laughs> 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 but i you know and, and that's the thing i mean you have all of this stuff 
you know, the, the, uh, you know, they, the fake news media wants to twist everything, and then you go mm-hmm. online, and it's all twisted. Everybody has these opinions. Twitter isn't real life, people. Um, it, you know, just calm down. Let common sense prevail. We don't need some massive conspiracy theory out there to make sense of all of this stuff. There's enough wrong with the world to go out there. Don't you agree? I mean, do you I tend do. to agree with that? I do agree. I I, I just feel bad for people because I think everyone's bored at their homes right mm-hmm. now. And they're just like they're going down the rabbit hole of Reddit yes. and believing things that they wouldn't normally do because they've got all of this idle time. So it's like I understand why it's being ramped up right now. But I, I agree that it's like, why? Yeah. We shouldn't be. I mean, we shouldn't be spending our time on it. But yeah. it, I think it's going to happen right now. Well, just remember T H. Hanks. We'll be right back. Well, apparently this morning, Bernie Sanders, one Bernard Sanders with three homes, has now taken down all Facebook ads from his social media. Aww. What will happen now, Bernie? What will happen now, Bernie? You Is see- he out of the race? Bernie says even if he loses, he's still in. He says he's still running. Bernie! I'm in my summer cabin. My winter cabin, I'm sorry. I don't know where I am. (laughs) Uh, Why do I say that we're not conservatives anymore? Because we have endorsed and supported the expansion of government that has grown beyond anything we can control. We've allowed it to happen. We have men and women who serve in the Senate and in Congress for 40 years and come out absolute millionaires, mega millionaires, because of what they've done. And we have sat back and tolerated this thing. It is not how America was founded. It's not what our intentions are. I don't care if you're a Republican. I'm not a Republican. I'm not anything. I've never signed the dotted line on anything in a political party. I'm just not. And now this idea of saying I'm going to go out and feast on the government dole, uh, whether you get 1000 or $2,000, at what cost? At what cost? What are you selling in order to do that? Uh, maybe nothing. Maybe it's just free money and boom, there it is. You get there's a little bump, right? But I want you to I want to remind you guys, you're all in this together. We're all in it. This is a global community. So if you have to miss a payment on something, okay, so you missed a payment on something. Get in line. Get in line. That's why these banks have this insurance. You know, you ever see the FDIC little marker, the little sticker on the thing? You ever see um you know, your, your credit card companies, they have insurance. They can write that off. I'm not telling you to go out there and skip. You know, the Bible says if you have the money, don't let your lender bo- uh, call on you tomorrow. I, I believe in that principle. Pay it off. But don't panic. Don't panic. Like you said, Natalie, if they foreclose on your home, can't nobody come buy it. <laughs> they ain't going to come get it. You stuck, Chuck. That's right. You stuck like Chuck. You stuck like Chuck. You're stuck with me. So, so this <laughs> panic and fear-mongering thing, I don't want you guys to do it. Remain with your values. And I'm not telling you that you're a bad person if you get a government check and it comes to you. I'm not, that's not it. The blame falls on the government, in mm-hmm. my opinion. I think it's the wrong thing to do. I, I don't think that this is it. it and I know you're in your situation, and maybe $1,000 could be all the money in the world to you, but at what cost? At what cost? Maybe nothing. But Sarah, I think the risk is there. Well, I think it is too. But I think, it, you know, if you want to get away from the personal situation of people saying, well, I need the money, you could also look at what the government doing, uh, what the government is doing on the other side of it, which is forcing all of these businesses to shut down. And there are so many people who I hear who claim to be conservative, who are just like, yeah, that's to- I mean, that's what the government needs to do. The government yeah. needs to step in and do that. So in that aspect, it's not even about the money that you're getting. It's about the government saying, OK, when you guys get scared enough, we get to come in and force private businesses to close and basically pick winners and losers in this pandemic, because that's what they're doing. The grocery stores are fine. The pharmacies are fine. But we're not. 